In this video, we discuss learning outcome number three from lesson 6.3, which is about the sampling distribution of sample means and its relation to the population mean. So just as a reminder, the sampling distribution of sample means is the distribution of all values of that sample mean when all possible samples of the same size n are taken from the same population. The notation we use is this. The sample mean is denoted that way. It's pronounced x bar. And this is an estimator of the population mean mu. Now, since the mean of the distribution of sample means is equal to the population mean, we say that x bar is an unbiased estimator. Um, another thing that you should know is that the distribution of sample means tends to be a normal distribution. We're going to talk about this more in the next lesson. And, um, 6.4 when we discuss the central limit theorem. Um, but the distribution tends to become closer to a normal distribution as the sample size n increases. Now the mean of the sample means is um, the population mean. So just like I said on the last si slide, uh, that sample mean is an unbiased estimator. Or in other words, the expected value of the sample mean is equal to the population mean. So if we're using sample means to approximate the population means, that's probably fine. That's going to be a good thing because when we look at the expected value of the sample means, we actually get what we're supposed to get, which is the population mean. In symbols, we can write it this way. I know it seems like there's a lot of mu's there, but what this on the left hand side says is that the mean of the sample means. So it's like the average of the sample means is equal to the population mean. So let's look at an example. So suppose we have that population that we talked about in the last video. It consists of three numbers, four, 17, and 11. Maybe we wanna find the population mean and see how that compares to sample means. So to make sure that we understand this idea of a sampling uh, distribution of sample means, we're going to compute or we're going to find a sampling distribution of sample means for this very small population with three elements in it. So first we'll find the population mean by adding all of those numbers together and then dividing by the total number of numbers, so dividing by three. And then we're going to use all possible samples of the same size n equals two, selecting with replacement and find the sample mean for each sample. Now we actually found all possible samples in the last video. So if you didn't watch that, you may want to watch that um, just so that you can see where those possible samples came from. Then once we have the sample mean for each sample, we're going to summarize the sampling distribution of the sample means in the form of a probability distribution table. Then we want to show that the mean of the sample means, which can be computed using that probability distribution table that we find in part C, is equal to the population mean. So first we'll find the population mean. That means just we're gonna add four, 17, and 11 together, and then we're gonna divide by three. And so it turns out that the population mean is 32 over three. And then we want to um, use all possible samples of size n equals 2, selecting with replacement, and then we want to find the sample mean for each sample. Now here are our samples, just as a reminder of what we did in the last video. If our population consists of three elements, 4, 17, and 11, we have three choices for that first selection. So we're either going to have a 4, a 17, or an 11. And then after we choose the four, we could choose a four, a 17, or 11. Or after we choose the 17, we could choose a four, a 17, or an 11. And after we choose the 11, we could choose a four, a 17, or an 11. So when we're looking for all possible samples of size n equals two, it turns out that there are nine of them because we've got three options for that first choice, that first selection from the population of three items. And then we've got three options for our second choice. Um, and that's getting us to that sample size of n equals two. So using that um, multiplication counting rule that we talked about back in chapter four, um, we have three times three samples or nine, nine possible samples and they're listed right here. So computing that number of possible samples using the multiplication counting rule is a really good way to ensure that you actually have all of the possible samples. Um, it's also helpful to make a tree diagram 
to come up with those samples as we did in the last video. Okay, so now we've got all of our samples and now we wanna find the sample mean for each of these. So we're gonna add these two numbers together and then divide by two. Add these together and divide by two. Add these together and divide by two all the way down. And when we do that, what we get is four for this one. Four plus four divided by two is four. Um, for this one, we get four plus 17. That's 21. 21 divided by two is 10.5. Then we've got four plus 11 divided by two is 7.5 and so on. 14 or 17 plus four is 21. And then we divide by two again, which is 10.5. 17 plus 17 divided by two is 17 and so on. So we actually have, let's see, we've got one sample mean there, and then the 10.5 appears twice, and the 7.5 appears twice. Then we've got a 14 that appears twice, and the 11 and the 17 appear once. So we have um, a number of options for that sample mean, and we'll summarize these in a probability distribution on the next slide. Okay, so the lowest sample mean, and I don't know why that bar is not showing over the X's, but there is a bar um, over the X's in that PowerPoint slide, and I'm not sure why it's not visible. Um, but these are our sample means. So I put them in order from um, smallest to largest, and the um, smallest number on our list of sample means is four. And then we had a couple of 7.5s, then we had two 10.5s, then we had an 11 and a 14 and a 17. And those are right here. Now we had nine possible samples of size n equals two. And if I want to know what the probability is of having a sample mean of four, well, there's only one four on this list of sample means. So we've got a one out of nine chance of getting a sample mean of a four. Now there were two sample means of 7.5, so we've got a two out of nine chance of getting a sample mean of 7.5. We have two 10.5s over here, so there's a two out of nine chance of getting a 10.5. There's only one way to get an 11 when you have both those values are, um, are equal to 11 over here in our sample. So there's a one out of nine chance to get an 11 as your sample mean. There are two ways to get 14. Um, so there are um, or there is a two out of nine chance that you get a 14 for your sample mean, and there's only one way to get a 17 um, if you're taking the mean of 17 and 17. And so there's a one out of nine chance for that probability. So this is our probability distribution table that summarizes the sampling distribution of the sample mean X bar. And again, I, I don't know why the bars are missing, but there should be bars over those X's. Okay, so now we want to show that the mean of the sample means is equal to the population mean. Now remember how we did this back in chapter five when we were talking about discrete probability distributions. Normally we had a bunch of X values over here. Those were all the possible values of some discrete random variable X. And then we had a probability associated with each of those values of the discrete random variable. Well, this time the discrete random variable is X bar, it's the sample mean for those nine samples that we were talking about. Um, well, for each of those nine samples. And we're saying, okay, what's the probability that the sample mean is this, 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 or this? We calculated those probabilities. Now, if we want the mean of the sample means, you've got to take your discrete random variable, which is X bar in this case, multiply by the probabilities, we get these numbers over here, and then you add all of those together. Turns out when you add all of those together, you get 96 over nine or 32 over three. And I don't know if you remember, but that population mean that we calculated at the very beginning, that was four plus 17 plus 11, and we divided by three, that was 32 over three as well. So we see here that the population mean, 32 over three, is equal to the mean of the sample means. So, um, this is just evidence that that works. And um, what we're telling you in this video is that that actually works all the time. The mean of the sample means will always be equal to the true population mean. And I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so now let's look at another example. This time we're repeating a process um, in which we roll a die five times to randomly select 
five values from the population of one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're finding the mean of the results. Now we could actually do this exactly the same way that we did the last problem. There's just a lot more possible samples than those nine that we talked about last time. So let's talk about how many possible samples there would be and what exactly we're talking about here. Um, I'll show you my paper so that we can um, look at this. Okay, so we're rolling a die five times. That's one of our assumptions. There we go. And then we're computing the sample mean of the five numbers that we get. So if I'm looking for the count of the number of samples that are possible, well, the first time I roll the die, I've got six options for that first guy. It's either gonna be one, two, three, four, five, or six. And then when I am rolling a second time, I also have six options. And then the next time I've got six options and the next time I have six options and the next time I have six options. So if I'm trying to count the number of possible samples, it's actually six to the fifth, which turns out to be, let's see, six raised to the fifth power is 7,776 samples. So it's not reasonable for us to list all 7,776 possible um, samples when we roll a die five times, but theoretically we could do it. We would be here a long time, but we could do it. We could list all 7,776 possibilities. Now, um, like let's, let's list some like possible outcomes. Um, so here's, here's an outcome. Maybe one of those 7,776 is this. Maybe we roll a one five times, which is pretty rare. So we get a one and then a one and then a one and then a one. In this case, the sample mean X bar would be one plus one plus one plus one plus one divided by five. And so we'd get a one there. Or maybe our first um, number is a one. Well, maybe four of these are ones. And let's say four of them are ones and then the second number is a two. In those cases, the sample means would be um, x bar equals 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 over 5. So we'd have 6 over 5, or we'd get a 1.2 that way. Say, so, okay, well, let's see, what other possibilities are there? Um, And I'm trying to go through this systematically so we can think about all possible um, outcomes for those 7,776 outcomes. Well, maybe all four numbers are equal to one. Again, including that first one. But instead of the second number being a two, the second number is a three. Well then for those guys, X bar would be one plus one plus one plus one plus three divided by five. And so we'd get seven over five or um, 1.4. Now we'll be here a very long time if we're coming up with all of the possible sample means. There are 
truly 7,776 options. I've just listed those that have a lot of ones in them, but chances are we're not going to roll that many ones. Um, but, but we could theoretically roll five ones or we could roll four ones and then the, the next number could be a two or we could roll four ones and the other number could be a three. Um, and I actually haven't listed the possibility that the, the first number is a two and the other four are ones or the first number is a three and the other four are ones. Um, but that's, these are, these are all possible. Um, and so when you're looking at, let's see, the number of ways that you could roll a two and four ones, there are those four ways that that could happen and then there's this way that could happen. So there are five ways that you could roll a two and four ones. So there are five ways out of those 7,776 ways. The probability is five out of 7,776 that our X bar is equal to what we get when we have a four uh, ones and a two, which is this 1.2. Now you're going to do this for all 7,776 um, combinations of rolling that die. And then you could come up with the probability for each of those. Um, so for the probability of having um, four ones and then a three, there are five of those out of the 7,776. Well, the X bar that's associated with four ones and a three is this uh, seven over five uh, or 1.4. Now there's actually only one way to get one, uh, five ones all together, which would give us a mean of one. So that's only one out of 7,776. But we could keep going like this. Um, we could keep going with all of the possible combinations um, and we'd have X bar for each of those and the probability that goes with each of those. Uh, we would be here a very long time now that would be completely exhaustive and it would be doing exactly what we did in example number one. That's not what we're talking about on this slide though. Um, and this slide, rather than doing this 7,776 times and thinking theoretically about what we would get, the probability of, of getting exactly this um, combination of four ones and uh, a two, for example and then finding the corresponding sample mean and then doing that for all of the possible combinations and then computing probabilities and then using this probability distribution to come up with the mean of the sample means. That's not what they did. Let me show you what um, Mr. Triola did or um, whoever it was that, that actually did this um, or ran this procedure um, that Mr. Triola uses in his textbook. So the question says, what do we know about the behavior of all sample means that are generated by this procedure as it continues indefinitely? So rather than thinking about this theoretically, thinking about those 7,776 different arrangements that we could get um, when we roll that die uh, five times, he's saying, let's just keep doing this. Roll the die five times and roll the die five times again and roll the die five times again even more than 7,776 times. He actually um, had someone roll the dies five times, 10,000 times. Um, so we've got a figure here. It shows the result, the result from repeating the process 10,000 times. Now he says that the true sampling distribution uh, of the mean involves, um, and involves, excuse me, repeating this process indefinitely. And we could do this indefinitely, but we could also look at the 7,776 times and find all of the different arrangements and then find the exact sample mean associated with each of those arrangements and the corresponding probability and do exactly what we did in example one but we would be here for a very long time as we come up with all the possible X bars for all 7,776 um, different outcomes that you get when you roll a die five times. So he said, let's not do that. Let's just do this 10,000 times and then uh, compute the sample mean for each of those 10,000 times. 
And then let's look at a, a frequency distribution in the form of a histogram. So they rolled the die five times, 10,000 times. Um, so each of those trials as rolling a die five times. And then every time they found a sample mean for those. So he's saying maybe the first time you got a 3.4 as your sample mean. And the second time you got a 4.4 as your sample mean. And the third time you got a 2.8 as your set, um, sample mean. And he did this 10,000 times. Well then the distribution after using 10,000 trials actually looks like this. You can see from the picture that it is, um, the distribution is approximately normal. It has that symmetry about that center line. The frequencies start low, then they're high, and then they're low again. And it turns out that if you compute the mean of these guys by taking the relative frequency associated with each of the um, sample means that you got, and then taking the, the relative frequency as an approximation to the probability of getting that particular sample mean. If you take the relative frequency and you multiply by the sample means, you add them together, that's going to give you the mean of the sample means. Approximately, again, because um, it's not using that true probability distribution that we would get if we looked at all the possible ways that we could come up with those 7,776 um, unique um, like rolls, the outcomes that we get when we, we roll a die five times. Um, so this is a little different because we did the 10,000 trials and then you looked at it. Um, but you would find the relative frequencies associated with the sample means multiplied by the sample means. And the relative frequency is an approximation of the probability. So you multiply those together, you add, and that's gonna give you the mean of the sample means. It turns out that the mean of the sample means is very close or exactly equal to um, 3.5. Um, he says that when they did this 10,000 times, the result was exactly 3.5. Okay, now, if you're thinking about the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, since all of those are equally likely, if we're finding a population mean, the population mean should just be the, the average or the, the mean of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that gives you 3.5. And it turned out, according to Mr. Triola, that the, sam the 10,000 sample means have a mean of exactly 3.5. So the mean of the sample means is equal to the population mean, which is what we expect, because the sample means are an unbiased estimator of the population mean. So that means using sample means to estimate the population mean, it's a good idea. Um, they give you what they, we expect them to give you if you keep doing this um, over and over again. Now, he says if you continue this process indefinitely, the mean of the sample means will, will be 3.5. Um, and we also see in the um, graphic, the figure, that the distribution is approximately normal. It has that low, high, low um, shape, and then it's all symmetric about um, that center line. So that is the end of our discussion of the sampling distribution of sample means. I'll see you in the next video to discuss the sampling distribution of sample variants.